So a token, like I said, was about three quarters of a word. So that would mean about seven and a half million-ish words, or, you know, it's about four characters. So that would be 40 million characters of text, because obviously we're gonna have to include dots, hyphens, etc. 40 million characters? I mean, the first Harry Potter book, you know, contains 76,000 words allegedly, and somewhere between 400 to 500,000 characters based on just a rough Google search. So you're telling me this is multiple book length AI? Incredible. Hi, my name is Dimitri Panici, and I'm a content creator, agency owner, and AI enthusiast. You're listening to the AI Agents Podcast, brought to you by Jotform, and featuring our very own CEO and founder, Ida Kintank. This is the show where artificial intelligence meets innovation, productivity, and the tools shaping the future of work. Enjoy the show. I don't get how they did it. I just, I don't get it. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Llama 4 is out. And while it might be the most entertaining name for an LLM out there, it is the craziest one out there. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is it is the first ever LLM that has a context window this large. There are multiple Llama ones available. We have Llama 4 Behemoth, Llama 4 Maverick, and Llama 4 Scout. Okay, so we got preview available and all of these, when you look at them, are incredible. But what might be the most interesting one of them is that Llama 4 Scout has a 10 million context length. What does that mean? So first of all, a token is about three quarters of a word, just for reference. So every large language model has a context window. And this is essentially referring to the amount of text that a model can consider when generating a response measured in tokens. Machine readable representations of words, parts or words or punctuation. So so a token, like I said, was about three quarters of a word. So that would mean about seven and a half million-ish words or, you know, it's about four characters. So that would be 40 million characters of text because obviously we're gonna have to include dots, hyphens, etc. 40 million characters? I mean, the first Harry Potter book, you know, contains 76,000 words allegedly, and somewhere between 400 to 500,000 characters based on just a rough Google search. So you're telling me this is multiple book length AI? Incredible. So what I'm gonna do here is just go into Meta AI and showcase the product because I figure that'd be the best option. And there's a couple different things here. So first we have the ability to add a new conversation and we can ask Meta everything. So first I'm just gonna say, what would be some great ways to test out your new Llama 4 models. Can you give me some prompts to test it out? All right, so we got a couple of prompts. Create a short story about a character who discovers a hidden world within their reflection. Also, by the way, they're peddling these images pretty hard, which I'm gonna show you in a second. All right, write a short story about a character who discovers a hidden world within their reflection. Explore the character's journey as they navigate this reality and confront their own fears and desires. Wow. This is outputting a lot of text. About 700 words, not bad. In the silvered glass of her antique mirror, Amelia's reflection stared back at her like a specter. She'd always been drawn to the mirror's intricate carvings and the way the light danced across its surface. But it wasn't until she'd been staring at her reflection for what felt like hours that she noticed something off. At first, it was just a flicker, a slight ripple in the glass like the surface of a pond disturbed by a thrown stone. Hey, this is an interesting story. I actually got entranced in that for a minute. That read like a book. That was pretty good. I like this. Okay, let's try another one. Try problem solving. Do another one. It does seem to have a tendency to write long responses, by the way. This is a problem solving. A man is looking at a photograph of someone. His friend asks him, who is the picture? The man replies, brothers and sisters, I have none. But that man's father is my father's son. Who is in the picture? Hmm, this classic lateral thinking puzzle requires a bit of creative reasoning. Let's break it down step by step. The man says, brothers and sisters, I have none. That is, this implies that he doesn't have any siblings. Then he says, but that man's father is my father's son. Here's where the puzzle gets interesting. The key phrase is my father's son. Since the man doesn't have any brothers, my father's son must refer to himself. In other words, his father's son is the man himself. That actually makes sense. Or I guess it could be a half-brother... No, he said he didn't have brothers. I guess that would, yeah, that would have to be him. That's a clever play on words, essentially. That's pretty good. I would actually have guessed half-brother. All right, let's try another one. Imagine you're planning a surprise party for a friend who loves science fiction. Can you help me come up with some ideas, decorations, and activities that would make the party a memorable experience for them? Let's chat about it. Okay, surprise sci-fi party does sound like a blast. No one says blast anymore, but I appreciate that it's trying to sound human. For a theme, how about... Galactic Odyssey, we could transform the party space into a spaceship 
complete with control panels, star charts, and a wormhole entrance. Alternatively, we could go for a dystopian future vibe, inspired by classics like Blade Runner or The Matrix, with neon lights, rain-soaked streets, and a hint of rebellion. Okay, this is kind of funny. Decorations recommendations, not bad, not bad. Time machine photo booths could be fun. Okay, overall, not a bad idea. What kind of music? Ooh, space theme cake, or maybe some alien cuisine, like G nightshade slides or nebula cupcakes. What music would you play? They didn't actually answer the question, which is funny. By the way, I do like how the sidebar here, you can rename things and delete it. They definitely got the UI decent. I don't like the sizing of the responses. I like the action bar being on the side, but what does a remix mean? Oh, I see. Changes the style. Oh, you can pick like, oh, that's actually very contextual. What if I wanted to make it more Star Wars signed or Star Trek or Doctor Who or Blade Hunter or Alien? Wow, that's actually very smart. I like that. Daft Punk's a good idea. Blade Runners sounds, you know, oh, the Tron Legacy soundtrack, Star Wars themes, Interstellar. Oh my God. Okay. This is actually really, this is good advice. I, I nerd out about all those things. Perfect. Now let's go here and pick one of these images. What does this do? Oh, I see. That's just a preemptive prompt. Just has an image on it, which usually they just end up putting as like text buttons you can press, not image buttons. Oh, they're debating. It's debating the best movie. Okay, I don't want to deal with that. I, I, I don't think AI is going to be right. Imagine an image. Ooh, let's describe an image. Three men arguing about which Star Wars character is the best Sith character. I can't wait to see this. This is going to be hilarious, whatever it comes up with. Oh my God, yes. I knew one of them was going to make them look like Star Wars characters. That's supposed to be like Luke Skywalker. This is supposed to be a Sith character. This is supposed to be someone else. Weird eye construction and stuff. They're in a bar arguing. That's accurate. They're in a library arguing. Oh, background sci-fi stuff. Or they're on the street. Yeah, men will argue anywhere. So this is pretty entertaining. Pressing edit. Ooh, you can make edits to this saying, make them look like Star Wars fans. And then you also have animate and regenerate. Interesting. Regenerate's obvious, you just retry it, but. Oh, look at that. The shirt has some of the logos. He has a helmet. Nice. Animate, what does animate look like? I love it. This is a multimodal model. Wow, ooh, it's got a little bit of animation here. This is arguing. They're like, come on, man. Let's try to animate this one. He's like, what? Oh, ew, oh, AI. Oh, AI, stop, 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 stop. Don't do that, don't do that. This one looked better. Their hands are weird. They're holding it the same. This guy looks the most human. This is just funny. Okay, it's interesting. By the way, uh, this is available in the United States. There's some limitations on why it's not in the EU right now, but it is in the United States. And by the way, in case you were wondering on the random benchmarks that I guess some people care about, Llama 4 Behemoth is better than GPT 4.5, Gemini 2.0, even though 2.5 is what's out now, and Claude 3.7 Sonnet in the following categories. Does this mean anything to you? I don't know. I know that it almost has a 100% math score. I feel like with a lot of these, I try to say, oh, this different benchmark means something. But at the end of the day, a lot of it's just grandstanding. And it's like, yes, we know it got better. Like, the, the, the numbers don't really tell us much for the average user. Now, the cost is interesting because it is cheaper than ChatGPT on the API. Just want to call that out. Even cheaper than 4.0. So we're going to have to keep on the lookout for pricing differentials. Gemini still is kind of in the lead with 2.0, but it's crazy how much ChatGPT's API costs seem to be the unreasonable ones in the market. With that being said, if you're interested in trying out this, please log into your Meta account right now and give it a test. It's available everywhere in the United States to my knowledge, and if you don't have it, it will be out soon. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.